we are going to just to explore um, six different techniques in working with a walking foot. One of them we actually have covered and that is the stitch in the ditch. The next one is that of a diagonal quilting with that walking foot. So we'll end up considering um, starting from one corner and going through the diagonals of your particular design um, down to the other end and, and we can, we'll talk a little bit, I'll show some examples of how you might decide how you want to space those stitches apart as you do the quilting, um, what techniques we could use to mark it, a few things like that. But even then, we could consider what would be called then a grid format where we would come back on the opposite corners and going from corner to corner the other direction in a grid format. Now, another st uh, stitch that we'll talk about is that of echoing. Now typically with many of these, and again imagining these being actual little blocks, that I have ahead of time gone and stitched in the ditch around this particular design element here. Whether it be a two inch block, it could be a six inch block, but I have done some stitch in the ditch ahead of time. And again, that stitch in the ditch is allowing my design element to pop forward. So with that, as we talk about it with this walking foot, um, I then am going to do some echoing around these design elements. And with that, I'll be going and whether I use you know, an eighth of an inch out with that walking foot. Oftentimes I like using the edge of the walking foot as my measuring tool. I could be doing this a quarter inch apart or even a little bit wider and some of that you'll make a decision on your own. But we will be following and doing this echoing outside of that design line. Now you happen to notice I've gone ahead and drawn in some of these, these um, cross lines here. And what I have discovered, it's really tricky when I'm working with this, dar this darning foot, or actually the, working with a walking foot. When I get to this point, I'm not quite sure where to pivot to go to the next design direction. So I have found by drawing in this this line here, that's where I would stop, needle down, pivot to go to the next spot. So that's just a little, some, a little side tip that we'll be able to utilize. So that's echoing. Now, the idea of outlining the design is again, oftentimes when we're thinking of machine quilting, the whole key to it is that, it, again, it's this third dimension, it's this wonderful visual texture that we're creating. And so again, with this outline quilting, I'm thinking of this small little um, square on point is my design element. I have already gone and stitched in the ditch around that. So with the outlining, it's a little bit similar to the echoing, but and then also I'm, I've, I'm imagining, sort of pretending, that I have a little square with some of this open space around here. And I have already stitched into the ditch with that. So again, the outline quilting, again deciding how far apart you're going to want those stitches, but I will um, be going and working around through this um, with again some of those with stitching lines to be able to outline it and I'll, ha I'll see those stitching lines within this square um, design and again the center of that, that d design element is going to pop forward and as I do the stitching and the quilting um, that is going to cause the background to recede and again give me some great dimension. Then, one other stitch we're going to talk about is what is called the wine glass design. And there is just a little bit of curve that we can create working with this walking foot. So when, and again, it'll be a lot easier when I show you some of the, the actual stitched out design, but basically the wine glass design, we're going to start at one point here, and then I'm going to kind of ease out as I'm stitching along to about a quarter of an inch out here and then ease back in, and then I'm going to go crisscross across to this next design, go out about a quarter of an inch, and then go back in. And again, I could do that for the whole length of the quilt um, as I work along. Now, I've gotten to the point where I can eyeball that pretty well, but there will be a couple of different techniques I'll talk a little bit about 
how we might initially, till we get more comfortable, how we might want to mark that quarter inch or that proximate eyeballing. But you know, as we get better at it and we kind of challenge ourselves that, um, again, I, I, if this is only a two inch block, I, I'll get myself comfortable with eyeballing it or maybe again, I can just mark a little quarter inch seam and then kind of work to get to that spot. So that's the wine glass. Mm -hmm.